Hey, what's up, guys? Thanks for coming by again for another episode of the Daily Crypto News. I uh, want to start off telling you guys happy Thanksgiving. Uh, we're, actually, we're always thankful for, for the, uh, you guys coming by, getting a little daily dose of the Daily Crypto News with me, myself, Mr. Vibe, and I got my brother with me, Scott Tripp, a.k.a. the Crypto Beast. Uh, as you guys know, we, uh, we like to get into the, a little bit of crypto news, what we're, we're seeing on uh, on the main headlines and, and talk about it a little bit amongst each other. Um, and like we said, we appreciate you guys being here. And I'll let Scott uh, give you a little bit about himself before we get started. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Scott with Big One. I do the social media side of Big One right now and handle the marketing for North America. So it's nice to see you guys all. Excited again to get closer to the end of the week, but also enjoy these news times with you. So, yeah, excited to go. Yeah, man, uh, it's been a lot of a lot of uh, a positivity today in the news market that we know over the beginning part of the week has been a very neutral feeling. Not, not a lot of stuff has been going on. Uh, just most of your gaming and metaverse tokens were taken off. Uh, a lot of other things were kind of lagging, but today it looks like it's a lot of. Uh, uh, green sentiment, <laughs> and uh, if we will uh, say on the market, it's been a lot of uh, talk all over Twitter about some interesting news, things that's going on. Um, so I'm going to jump in my first article today. Uh, the one that I got a hold of was uh, actually about Axie Xfinity. It uh, hasn't been a lot of talk about Axie Xfinity lately, but as we know, it's definitely a prominent project uh, with a lot of plans to, to do a lot more. Um, so as you guys know, they're building out their metaverse right now. And uh, uh, the land, uh, a Genesis plot sold for over 550 Ethereum, which is about 2.3 million US dollars. Um, so that's like, to me, it's like, that's a lot of money for a digital plot of land um, on their metaverse. So this is, it's, uh, it's 301, 301 by 301 square grid. Um, so that's the size of this. And yeah, it's gonna, it's, it's gonna be crazy. Uh, I'm, I'm wondering who bought it. Um, and I wonder what they're planning to do with it, but that's a, that's a big chunk of money to pay for some land. Yeah, no doubt. Well, in Axie Infinity, the chart looks really good still too. So I think we're going to still see money going into that, which is amazing for the Philippines and for the people there. It's bought lots of people houses and, and different things like that. So I'm excited for them. I get um, I'll go into this because we kind of talked about it before and it's kind of funny that this came up. Uh, I knew it was going to happen sooner or later. I don't know what you think about this. You might get a kick out of this. but um, So, crypto trading hamster that outperformed Warren Buffett has died, sadly. Uh, the, Mr. Gox, a crypto trading hamster that at one point was outperforming Warren Buffett and Kathy Woods, has died. The hamster's owner, a 30-something lecturer and prototyping specialist in Germany, tweeted Wednesday that Mr. Gox had shown no signs of serious illness apart from some kidney issues in his earlier days. After eating normal amounts of food Sunday, he suddenly refused to eat and died in his sleep on Monday. Mr. Gox, whose real name was Max, gained prominence in September as a social experiment demonstrating the randomness of the crypto market markets. Uh, his office included a hamster wheel that Mr. Gox used to select a cryptocurrency to interact with. It also included two tunnels, one for buying and one for selling the selected cryptocurrency. Thousands of people tuned in to watch the hamster buy and sell crypto on Twitch, and many kept track of his performance on Twitter. At one point, he even got a shout out from Elon Musk and was mentioned on The Daily Show. And it's kind of cool that they talk about this. It says, as of his last trading session on November 20th, Mr. Gox was up 19.72% for the year. <laughs> Bro, at first I was like, man, who is Mr. Gox? I thought this was like a real human. We we're talking about somebody dying. Uh, so first of all, I was about to come in with my condolences. Uh, but condolences to, to the hamster, man. That's, that's crazy. I was like, that made me like instantly go over and, and look at the hamster coin uh, chart just to see if it had died as well, but uh, it still looks like it's going, it's going okay, just doing a little bit of consolidating. Um, that, that trading hamster, I mean, I'm, I'm mad he didn't, uh, they didn't like breed it or at least try to uh, clone it um, to have another hamster just like him. Like his office sounds nice. It was almost like a presidential suite for hamsters, right? <laughs> So that is pretty funny, man. Uh, I'm gonna jump into my next news article. The next one I got up for you guys today uh, is gonna be about 
Panther, uh, Panther Protocol, which is a privacy enhancing technology provider for the decentral uh, for the DeFi industry, has completed its public sale to continue building private solutions for DeFi and Web3. Uh, they were able to raise twenty two point uh, twenty two million dollars in one and a half back hours. In two seconds, keep going. Sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry. So they were able to raise two uh, twenty two million in the one and a half hour public uh, sale. Um, so that was going to be that. That was, I think they locked up, uh, yeah, they locked up 5% of the supply uh, and 15% was sold in uh, in seed and pre-seed private funding. So it looks like they were, uh, they left about 85% there um, to be sold out, but it sold out in minutes. Uh, and it was some, actually some people complaining about um, not being able to, uh, you know, buy it uh, in the time. It was like some one, one person reported buy buy button did not work but everything else when you send your details id and pictures works well through their mobile app so where's the justice now when we want when we wait in line register our kyc and all the things that we have now and still don't have a chance to buy it so a lot of people were mad that weren't able to participate but to the people who were able to get into the panther protocol um uh pre-sale i mean public sale i you know congratulations but yeah it seems like it was mixed emotions but i think that's going to be a, a really strong protocol going forward well, and I was in there trying to get into the pre-sale and it was sold out fast. Like I didn't even have an opportunity to do it. And then they had a bunch of like spam bots in there, people pretending to be Panther Protocol, uh, sending you an extra white spot listing or whatever. Which that was, was kind of funny. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I know this is fake, but people need to be aware of this. Like it was horrible. Like it was almost like an exact copy and it would say like, uh, panther uh, panther bot or whatever and the picture of the actual panther protocol panther protocol bot and then it would say uh, we're able to hand out another thing and it was like a bot that was just sending out a message saying that you had an extra spot I was like I know this is fake but I bet you there's a lot of people that got taken advantage of wow yeah, yeah. man you definitely got to be careful with uh, telegram is almost like the wild wild west uh, when it comes to that stuff, make sure, uh, guys, um, don't, if you didn't message the person first, uh, it's pretty unlikely they're going to be reaching out to you, um, you know, just to, you know, keep I, it safe. I only say check in the channels and stuff. Like when I'm talking to developers and stuff, if I get introduced to them from another person, I'll go back in that chat and say, can you give me the person's name? So I know that this is a true person, that this isn't somebody that isn't who they say they are. And it, it's just a simple thing to do because there is so many fraudulent people sitting in chats, sitting in areas like that, trying to take advantage of people that don't know any better. So, yeah. And now um, I guess my next news article now. Um, so what you got? What you got? I'm going to talk about crypto poses no big risk to economy so far, Bank of Canada official says. Cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin do not pose any significant risk to the financial system at the current level of adoption, according to Bank of Canada Deputy Governor Paul Boudry. Boudry spoke about the risk to st stability of the Canadian financial system at Ontario Security Commission Dialogue 2021 on Tuesday. When asked whether cryptocurrencies are at risk, the deputy governor responded that the Bank of Canada doesn't think that crypto is developing in a way that creates a systematic type of risk for a financial system up to now. This is because cryptocurrencies are quite removed from the financial system. But as the markets grow bigger with more people investing in crypto, it becomes more of a risk, which could mean a certain level of vulnerability. Uh, he also stressed that Classic cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin do not play much of a role in payment as investors buy Bitcoin mainly to speculate. And then he's just saying Canada has emerged as one of the most world's most friendly crypto friendly countries, becoming one of the first jurisdictions in the world to approve a Bitcoin exchange traded fund. Canada has also become a popular spot for global crypto miners, ranking the fourth largest nation in terms of hash rate, according to the Cambridge Bitcoin electricity consumption index so this is amazing like canada coming out their guns are blazing at the state saying you guys are fudding and doing whatever and i have another article that's totally fud as well that we'll discuss after this but <laughs> this is just showing canada's role that they're taking in and 
and uh, doing it in the proper way. And I really respect that. Yeah, I mean, if they come out with a digital currency, making it easier for people to transfer their crypto into fiat uh, if they wanted to or into cash. I mean, it's a win win for, you know, the bank for sure. Um, so I, I think it'd be hard for them to ignore that, especially with a lot of stable coins out there. Um, so I, I'd see Canada, you know, you know, probably, you know, reaching out to some of their private investors, trying to put some things together, uh, and probably get a coin going. I mean, I think it's an exciting time for crypto. It just keeps showing the, like, you know, the, 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 the adoption happening right here in front of our faces. So I think it's, that's really amazing. Well, and with their stable coin, they're going to be able to attract people a lot easier than well, yeah, I mean, they're going to want it really well regulated. If the bank's going to be involved, it's pretty much the same thing where they're kind of warming people up. You can see it over the last couple of years with KYC policy. And, you know, like that's what they have the banks involved in some of the larger institutions. You're going to need this KYC. Um, so, yeah, I mean, they're definitely going to be tracking information. <laughs> so I think that's going to be the same thing uh, with crypto.com as, as well, you know, in Crow. So, um, yeah, I mean, if you have institutions like Visa get involved, they're definitely going to. They're going to want some regulation or, you know, some some form of governance. Yeah. Um, so, but my next article here, um, as we always been, to, well, not always, but the last week or so, we've been talking about, uh, well, probably like the last two weeks, we've been talking about game inside, metaverse, um, and and kind of like, um, you know, watching those outrun the, the outperform the blue chips uh, in a sense in this in this market so far. Um, and so it, it led people to start, you know, speculating. And, and a guy from Grayscale or a news report from Grayscale, uh, they're, they're super bullish on the Metaverse Web3 cloud economics. They, I mean, economies, they're saying that, you know, they think that just the gaming Metaverse sec sector alone could get reach $1 trillion. Um, right now, the total market cap is in the two, the three trillions. Um, and but for them to think that you know just gaming alone getting to a one trillion dollar market cap that's going to be super uh huge for you know projects uh like you know sandbox metaverse i mean meta hero uh you know um decentraland um uh, i think this is going to be big news um and and i mean what if if that reaches one trillion dollars scott what what, how much of that market cap do you think Sandbox and Mana have uh, when they're controlling most of it right now? Um, that's going to be really, that's going to be uh, some big news. Really excited to see what happens um, going into, you know, when we're, as we finish up quarter four and, and going to quarter one of 2022. Excited. That's all I can say. <laughs> yeah, I, I li love the metaverse and I think it's a way of bridging countries and cultures and everything together. And having some open discussions without having to to travel and stuff so well what's funny what's hmm? funny is the 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 metaverse the metaverse wallet holders in the beginning of 2021 was five thousand people uh now towards the latter part of the year so we're fifty thousand people who own you know uh, a section in in, in these in, in a manner of sandbox so that's that's a lot of growth. Uh, that's a hundred. That's a hundred X. Uh, just a, a small amount of time, and, and, and just a, almost a year's time since since then. Yeah, for sure. So, here's my fun article. My fun article: Clinton regulates crypto to stop manipulation by Russia and China. Former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton has said that cryptocurrency markets need stronger regulation to protect against technological manipulation by Russia. China and others. Uh, Clinton warns extended to technologies of all, all kinds, which she said state and non-state entities could use to destabilize countries and the dollar as a reserve currency of the world. So my question, man, how the F, excuse my language, like I don't want to even say the word, is this going to destabilize a country? She needs to realize that it's going to help stabilize the country. As cryptocurrency gets adopted, there is going to be more money running into the economy, helping people and doing the exact opposite of what she's saying. China and Russia are not going to FUD a cryptocurrency. Maybe they could on a stable coin do something of some kind of manipulation. But I mean, on cryptocurrency as a whole, there's no freaking way that they're going to have that big of an impact on anything. And I mean, look at China's banned cryptocurrencies and probably 50% of their people are still buying into it in some ways to continue their 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 hunt on cryptocurrency. There's no way of stopping cryptocurrency, Hillary Clinton. Just let us be and let us grow. 
That's all I got to say. Um, I just want to know, did she send that via email? Because we know that her emails. <laughs> <laughs> they always get tapped into. So uh, yeah. I'm not sure what, you know, she's talking about. I mean, you got to understand. Well, you know, in a respected manner for, you know, what they do, um, you know, they like to keep things as uniform as possible. And I think they like this old school, uh, you know, fiat system where obviously they're empowered, right? So like, I mean, just like being early to the party, uh, you know, they were early to the party. Um, and now that there's a new party, she doesn't want people to leave her party to go to the new party. Well, I mean, that's the beauty of crypto, right? It's, it's gonna be a super nice party. It's gonna be, you know, more modernized party. Uh, and nobody's gonna go to, wanna go to that that tea party in a sense. Um, so uh, I, I, I don't care what, you know, like right now, I, I don't really pay attention to those main headline news. I think it's more funny than FUD, uh, but some people do take it as FUD, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't dig too deep into it if I were you guys. So, well, and the know. funny thing is you guys, if you think about this, she's saying how, these countries have manipulated elections and whatever else. Well, I'll tell you, with cryptocurrency and a blockchain, you can actually change the idea of a voting system to make it totally secure so that you wouldn't have to be worrying about the FUD of a US or China government uh, manipulating election or doing something to change it on the voting spectrum side of it, like actually manipulating votes or doing anything like that, like Mr. Trump said, but I mean, here, here's the thing, like Bitcoin or cryptocurrency is the future. It is 100%. It's going to be in every side of our existence. It is the future. It's like I said, who's going to be the first one to make a galactic uh, token? I'm waiting for it. I'll be the first one to buy into it because you know what, when they, if the aliens or whatever come, the first thing they're going to do is they're going to want to probably deal in a digital currency, not in a <laughs> guarantee that much. <laughs> oh my <laughs> God, man. Uh, shout out to the alien coins out there, man. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely going to be, I, I've, I've been thinking about it lately and, and when people, because a lot of people ask me, you know, like, why do I believe in, you know, the gaming sector so hard? And, and if we go back down to the root of, uh, you know, a digital currency, um, and, you know, you go into like the business world and look at, you know, entertainment, gaming entertainment holds a big section of the market's money, right? Uh, think about PlayStation and how many partnerships they have and stuff like that. So when you start seeing these companies get involved with cryptocurrency and you take that entertainment and you make it as a, a work almost, you know, a play to earn feature, um, this is just like, this is the next level, right? Like the, this is just like, this is a whole new, whole new system, whole new, whole new thing. So, I mean, when I read that article about, you know, the metaverse actually reaching a $1 trillion market cap, at first I was like, that's crazy. Like why, why would they make it that high? Um, you know, Bitcoin is just at a trillion dollars, but Bitcoin doesn't play any games. Bitcoin doesn't have any play to earn features. Uh, it's, it's really, you know, uh, people buying it, like you said, out of respect, you know, um, speculation that the price will go up because, you know, they're giving it value. But these projects like Sandbox and, and, and the Metaverse projects, they're offering something, you know, something that's going to be life changing going forward. So I don't think it's going to surprise me when I see these, uh, these market caps start reaching higher and higher uh, market caps, respectively, man. Like, I, it's just, it's not going to surprise me anymore. But before we get out of here, guys, going to jump into uh the little bit of dose of the the total market cap with you guys um today's total market cap has been around 2.64 trillion to 2.75 trillion it's up 1.2 percent from yesterday uh bitcoin dominance is down to 39.8 ethereum sitting at 18.6 so we're still not seeing bitcoin get back into the 40 percent and hold uh, on the dominance so that's really good as the more we see that uh you're going to see other things uh get get you know money pumped into it in, institutional money uh it's really starting to flow well towards the quarter four of the year so just guys keep paying attention to what's going on keep paying attention to the sectors that are hot uh, make sure you guys don't eat too much turkey today or or stuffing or pork uh make so you can be back here tomorrow and, <laughs> and, and catch us catch us again for another episode of daily crypto days I was throwing that pork, that pulled pork. Yum, yeah, yum, man. Yum. I think I'm going to go ahead. I, I stopped eating pork <laughs> for the first time this year, guys, and I think I might dabble back in there and get some. Mm -hmm. All right. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving, you guys, in Canada. 
our Thanksgiving is over, but we're excited for you and happy uh, that you get to celebrate and uh, give thanks to everything that's in your life. So, yeah, happy Thanksgiving, guys. Till next time, peace. Peace.